right, folks, how's it going? Travis Foder here again. We're going to uh, go over that sound you just heard that I submitted for the sound effect April contest. Um, a lot of cool stuff in there. So what I'm going to do too is also in the comments, you can actually download some of these source files. I'm going to take a lot of the sends and print them out so we can, uh, everybody can mess around with these sounds. So let's, uh, let's jump right in. So unlike my, um, my 15 minute design videos, this is going to be a little bit longer, a little bit more in depth. Obviously the sound is more complex, but also I want to go over more into my session stuff because now this is a real session. This isn't just me throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks. We have some more uh, organization, more um, formalities and, and stuff like that, right? So in here, we're going to start with, uh, well, you got the video track, obviously. I'll go over what these ghosted tracks are later, but we have the uh, my first um, verb track. So this is kind of like my glue verb. Uh, it's set pretty hot. And then we pull that way down individually on the receives. Uh, I love the sound. It just gives you this cool sci-fi kind of sound. Uh, we use that pretty much everywhere. As for the second one, this is just another crazy reverb. We sprinkle in on a lot of the tracks to give it this kind of excessive, um, almost kind of like whooshy character to it. Cool. So uh, a big part of the challenge for me here was I really wanted to break out of my comfort zone with um, a lot of like serum patches that I have and massive patches that I have and try to use my Eurorack that I don't use enough. So a lot of the stuff, probably about 60 to 70% of it is your rack, um, 20 to 25% of it is, is recorded. And then I used two patches, two super simple patches that I'd go to for um, a lot of, you'll see they're uh, pretty simple sounds um, over in Massive X. So yeah, so this first one is um, what I'm going to do first, actually, I'm going to take off the effects and then we'll go over it. So here's this first your rack um, pad for the bass in that first little intro. What I really like about this is that it's pretty dirty, right? It's pretty messy. Uh, there's some CV that happens there that makes things a little unclear, a little cluttered in this middle area. I just thought that was fun. So let me pull open um, the plugins here. So the first thing, a little bit of saturation drive to crank it up a bit. And then we have uh, some filter freaks, some automation filtering that I'll pull up on the session. And then of course, good old decap. So let's check that out. So that looks like this right now. Um, just the, just the, the filter freak is mod, being modulated over time to kind of uh, have this uh, kind of passing effect, right? And yeah, so all the effects sounds like this. Oops, let me get that video queued up for you. So let's try this now. Cool, the video is not stoked, but we'll have to keep going. Um, and I'm gonna hide the envelopes because I have OCD. Yeah, so the second part, let's do the same thing. Let's queue, uh, pull the plugins away. Sorry, I didn't go through and set a shortcut for muting all effects sends, but so here's that uh, same same idea here. We took the um, your rack and spliced out some samples, did some comping and cutting in the middle there. And that, if you listen, the, the character of that second reverb, the black hole, really gives it this um, upper brightness, shimmery kind of sound. So yeah, let me add uh, those effects back on. I am recording this right. Nice, we are recording, perfect. As you guys can see, I'm um, kicking off my Stream Deck work here. So we can, uh, we can go to the title card again. We can uh, go back to my beautiful face. We can go back to main. Pretty cool, pretty cool little uh, little box. Highly recommend it. I can, I'm gonna do a video later of, um, of the Stream Deck itself so we can learn about how I use that. Yeah, cool, so with the plugins, uh, this sounds like this. And what I'm doing specifically here is uh, we're compressing it up front. We have another instance of black hole. Now it's important to note that this instance of black hole is pretty much just kind of like a slap back, um, kind of just to put it in, in a different space. And the reason is, is because this sound is trying to be more of the character of that movement going up. So the, adding the black hole in as a completely different reverb um, to some, and, and to, in some extent it is kind of different and it pulls it out of the space, but it's just trying to give it more character to differentiate it. Um, you know, if you, if you mix this in improperly, if it's too much, too loud, it's going to sound like it's out of left field. So there was a little bit of work there to make that uh, nice and neat. Uh, this is a straight up granular module preset out of um, Snap Heap. I think I added the disperser. Uh, I love the Snap Heap stuff. Sounds great. So with the plugins, let me, uh, let me remove them really quick again. This sounds like this. And bring it to life. Yeah, so we really get that resonance, that way high resonance out of this resonator here. And, you know, resonator with some reverb, you're in, you're in sci-fi land, right? 
Cool. Uh, so this next one, uh, buzzy clip synth upper. Yeah, so this is one of the few sounds we use that in Massive. So let me pull this up. Um, yep, here's my Massive X patch. Yeah, this is uh, kind of a go-to of mine. Um, so I'll be straight up with you folks again. Um, with Massive X, I, I'm, I'm really comfortable with the older Massive. That's been my synth for a long time. That's how I make a lot of my work. I'm still getting my head around this. So this has been a lot of knob turning, a lot of like, I think this will work. I think this will work. Um, just messing around with it. And what I like to do, um, I don't have it up here right now, but what I actually do is I will have the Massive X track as a VST on one track, and then I'll have it just record right below it. And I always just record. I record everything out of the DAW all the time. So I'll uh, just keep messing with the knobs as it's recording, as it's recording. If I get that sound and I like it, I don't have to worry about it because it's already being recorded um, as audio too, not just as MIDI. Uh, so we, we had that. Uh, what else we got going on here? Cool. Yeah, so Echo Boy to give it some... Um, just, you know, doubling, uh, doubling it, but also a lot of, uh, more character here, more space. I gotta stop saying character, huh? <laughs> Is it all the same character if you keep saying it? Uh, crystallizer to give it that widening, uh, crystally effect. Two instances of those for some reason. Um, and I, th I like radiator actually as a subtractive EQ. So, uh, I, I use this, I use radiator a lot to pull out bass. I just like the character of it. it. Doesn't, it doesn't suck the air out of the room. It just calmly, cleanly removes stuff. And then we're boosting it here a little bit. So yeah, let me uh, play this by itself. Cool. And then let's play it uh, with all our plugins on them. Yeah, there's a big difference there, right? So let's see, we're we doing any envelope work here. We are not, great. So here's what we have so far. Uh, let's, let's, let's finish the base section and then we'll jump down there. Oh, cool. Well, this is pretty straightforward. I, we have, um, I only have a cloud terrarium. That's the only oscillator I, I use and it has a noise mode. So I'll just jack on the noise mode, record a bunch of noise source. So as you can see, actually, what I like to do is, uh, I'm going to go into my, um, open my Docker really quick. I have my track view right on the right here. I can bring these, um, these are kind of, uh, some random tracks that I, I use a lot. So Q beeps is really helpful. It, it's up here now, this top track. So what I use Q-beeps for is these are um, individual one second beeps. And this is really helpful for uh, queuing stuff live. So this is kind of out of the Foley handbook. So you can use this to queue up sounds and I would use this to um, do all sorts of things. Probably not this queue. This is just a wild noise queue. Um, massive bass prints. We have all sorts of Eurorack recording prints. And in here, I would just take a bunch of noise and then go back later and pull out what I liked about it. And that apparently, uh, sounded like this. Well, let me go through again, actually. Sorry, let me go through and pull up these effects. Yeah, so it looks like we're probably taking the same crystallizers and the same uh, Echo Boys from the track above it for uh, some uniform and then uh, some resonant filtering uh, with the Filter Freak to kind of give it more character. Aha, <laughs> character. Where am I? Uh, let's see. I want to take these off. Sorry. Yeah, so without the effects, it's it's just noise. It sounds like I must have um I might have actually done this kind of live, it's like pseudo live, just kind of looking at the video and running it, and I would kind of just do a quick um a quick sweep on the actual your rack itself. And there's something kind of cool to that, right? It's um I, I like, like I said in my one of my 15 minute videos, I, I like drawing in little quick, easy automation lines, but there's something kind of fun that this is the sound that it is, and this is the print you're gonna get. And if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't, but it's it's nice to know that that's what the recording was. There's some something fun there. Uh, drips, what is this? What are you? I don't know, let's listen. Uh, looks like a Eurorack recording. Well, I might have a better time identifying it if I uh, take off these effects. Simple. So um, just some uh, a simple waveform being modulated um, at a high. Oh, you know what I did? Here's what I did. Um, cloud Terrarium, uh, the pitch is being controlled by, um, or I guess the the attack and the uh, envelope is being triggered by Renee, just as a, sequen uh, a sequencer of CV. And then I probably just squeeze it all together. So what I can do is I can stretch it out to see if, if my uh, thing holds. Oops, let me see if, uh, yeah, this, this is gonna sound more like what I think it initially started as. Yeah, 
it's pretty simple, you know, game audio 101 kind of sound, sped up. Uh, and then what we did processing wise is we, um, looks like we brought over a very similar, you know, crystallizer filter freak echo boy. Yeah. These are the same plugins. We brought these right over. I probably could have made this its own send and made it its own little effect group and sent these tracks to that effect group. But, um, that's not how I did it for some reason. I have no really good answer there. And then some decap. So let's see if there's any, uh, envelopes there. Nice. So it doesn't look like anything crazy. A little bit of frequency mod on the or, um, adjustment of the fil uh, filter freak. That probably wasn't intentional when you see little tiny movements like that. For my stuff, I don't I don't usually do that for automation. And here's with the uh, one more one more time without the effects, just so you can hear it. Oh, and I'm sorry. We have a black hole on here. Lava lamp. So yeah, this is a, another technique I like to use. Um, this is the same exact settings of the um, the send but I like to have more control just of another way to jack it up. You're going to get a lot. You're going to run into issues here where it gets cloudy. Uh, this is a kind of wild, crazy, super hot, chaotic sound. And yeah, I think you lose a lot of clarity here, but you can, I, I think I fixed that with some EQ later. So here's uh without, oops, that's the wrong button. Here's uh without little game audio 101 sound. And here's with everything going on. Yeah, so you can probably barely even hear that. Um, the effect rack, the filter is sweeping so fast that it's only playing those a couple little times. And let's so let's just gel these all together. Instead of being like a, a whole big riser, it's just every little bit it's spritzing in that uh, beeping sound. Cool. So let's um, let's hear what we got so far. And I will use the video there. Sorry about that. Yeah, so it's it's funny this uh, this last track of the riser, its uh, its job is actually to kind of tickle in with the with the delays there and the and the effects trail there. So if I take this out, you're gonna hear a totally different sound here. Yeah, that's the wrong sound for sure. Cool. Very cool. And I'm going to go through and timestamp this stuff so folks, you can jump around to different sections of the video and see different parts. Um, really quick, I divided this this video in or this uh, this uh, sound into three te three pieces. Uh, we have the start. I always start my um, my comps with a head call, so I can jump back and forth to that if I need to. Uh, we have a start, so that's the first frame where I wanted to. The, well, the following frame will be a will need sound, right? Uh, the start of the riser, and then the uh, might be two frames off. Not good. It's okay. And then. Um, Start of the impact. Cool. Alrighty, so let's um we're gonna actually skip this section. We're gonna jump down. Oh, excuse me, one more thing in that um that riser section. Uh this is my little group here for the pre-burst, that riser section. Um and what initially happened was I came up with this sound here. Uh I took some coins out of my rusty trusty piggy bank here. And I, um, I have a little um, contact mic in my Euro rack, so I was just actually holding my hand, um, holding my hand somewhere and shaking my hands along the Euro rack to get some texture. Uh, I was doing that, and I was also just running the coins through this microphone, um, getting a bunch of coins to kind of get some quick, sharp, clinky attack sounds. I'm gonna play them in the context here first, uh, which is the riser, and then I'm gonna bring them back to the initial part, to the first part, so that kind of makes more sense. So here's, um, so if I really dig in here, let me just zoom in on this track a bit. So I, I love this um, multi uh, free item positioning because if I have all the effects sends up and I like how the, the track sounds, I can just bring in cuts and copies of that same coin sound. So if I solo it, if I solo it and I take off these effects. Here's what we have. It's just coins, right? It's just coins. And then later in the second clip, the coins are just dirtier, hotter, uh, grittier. I don't hear a lot of the contact mic. I think most of these happen to be actually just from this little road I have here. But they're totally coins, right? They're definitely coins. And then uh, we have some EQ, bring out the low end. We have um, this same, you see, this is another thing in my work to kind of bring things together. I will save this little um, effect group, I guess they're called, and drop that back and forth, bring them all together, right? So this crystallizer echo boy thing, I'm sure I'm gonna see more of these. Um, it's it's gotta keep it all in the same world, right? 
uh, and then snap heap. Ah, T. Okay, cool. This is a cool little sound. This is um pretty much like one of the presets. I um I changed a lot of the. Where is it? It looks like this is pretty straightforward for one of the presets in here. Um, this cool kind of um quick cutoff filter effect happens like this. So this is the sound with all those effects happening. And then I believe there's some envelope work. Yeah, so let me uh, let me pull this down. Yeah, so what I wanted to do, um, you know, I'm gonna go over the automation later because we're not even looking at the that sound yet. And then, so yeah, it's more of the same here, right? I uh, brought those coins together, mashed up the rates, a lot of comping, a lot of editing. And for this automation, we did nothing. Never mind. I thought we did some automation here, but I guess so. I I uh, I thought we would have had different um, reverb sends for this bassy section here versus the the riser, but I guess not. So let me just play just the coins with the video, and you can kind of see where that texture comes from. Cool. I really like that sound. It it's really, it was really fun to see those coins kind of working in a way that I wasn't expecting them to. I initially wanted them to add context to this riser, and then I was like, wait a second, that might be a really cool to kind of drabble in in the beginning too. Cool. Alrighty folks. So let's jump over to the riser here. So the riser, I had a lot of fun here. I, this is the last sound I did for the project. I'm going to play this first one with uh, effects off. This looks like, um, metally bits. Oh, this is pretty cool. So, uh, contact mic broken, uh, bottom base of a, of a, t not the, the one I'm holding. So these are like little metal earth, uh, Star Wars things. Um, the broken base of a TIE fighter one. And all I was doing, it was rubbing it on the contact mic, putting that through a filter, um, doing some adjustment to the envelope and then spitting it back into the DAW. And we got stuff like this. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, so it's just super, um, I guess I just cranked the output so it was really gritty here before I even sent it in. And that sounds like this. And with the video, you can kind of get some context of where it's gonna fit. So it's that first piece of the swirl. And then I know we did a bunch of processing here. Yeah, so uh, the thing to keep in mind with this group, so if you look up here, this pre-burst group, I need that whole piece to swirl, right? That piece needs to go wow, swish, something. Uh, so what I did here was a couple big automation moves. Uh, this pan is going to help that swirling effect, right? And then over time, we actually uh, do a do a filter. Um, let me pull open the effects here so this makes more sense. So here's the pre-burst group all these tracks below it live on. Um, we have a, a filter freak um, doing a filter sweep. We have a little bit of mid cut. I'm sorry, mid boost. We have another EQ of bring out the low end, and then we have a compressor. So all that work is happening to these tracks below it. So this group right here, let me hide this automation. So this pre-burst group has all this stuff that all that filtering is sucking it all together, all the comp compression sucking all those sounds together. And then um, we're not sending this group to the reverbs. We're doing it sparingly individually on the sub uh, the sounds below it. So let me uh, pull up that sound I was just referring to. Drop in Snap Heap, Vocal Swarmer, it's a killer preset. Um, you know, like I've said before, I, I'm I'm totally cool with preset surfing. If I get a sound that I want out of a preset, great. I probably, I, I can't remember the last time I took a preset and just left it as it was. I usually end up doing something, but with the Snap Heap stuff, it's always, honestly, it's always 80% of the way there for me. So, and then Microshift. Uh, Microshift's great for widening sounds. So let's play the before again of just our metally bits, uh, TIE fighter being scraped along the contact mic. Cool. And obviously the, there's processing here on the pre-burst. You know what? Let me do this actually. That's just so we can all hear everything, right? So let me just kill this one. We're not using you. So here's, it's really raw now. Yeah, you can really hear it now. Cool. And then snap peep and effect rack. Cool. So we also have some panning happening to kind of swirl it or give it that swirly effect that we need for that clip. And then, um, sorry, nope, wrong button. But I'm going to bring back these effects. Um, so here the whole thing. Nice. 
cool sound already. Ah, I don't know what this next one is. We're going to have to play with this and figure it out. Do a little bit of verse. I know I used my mouth to record some stuff, so I have a feeling that might be this. Cool. Nice. Okay, so this is my mouth into this mic. Um, and I think this is a really good place to start when you want to do movement. Because your mouth can be act as the timbre and act as kind of the um, the overall overall um, you know the filtering of the sound as it as it changes over time. So uh, let me turn off all the processing again. And this is me just going or whatever I can get out in that take. You know you can really hear it if I so it's sped up. You can really hear it if I slow it back down to what it was. Oops, I'm sorry. If I yeah slow it back down to what it was. And take a listen. Yeah, you can hear it from me going something like that. Cool. So we slap on the processing again. I keep hitting that button. We slap on the processing up at the main group, and then we also have some individual processing happening here. This is a vocal swarmer, same preset. Frequency shifter to jack it all up and a little bit of delay. And that sounds like this. Doesn't sound like much, but when you combine them with this other guy, it's getting some movement now. Uh, really quick, you know, something I want to mention too. Shout out to Kieran on Twitter. He reached out to me after my last video and uh, showed me this awesome plugin, um, I guess, Fast Effects Finder that he built. And it's awesome. So if I just want to, and I use this this whole session, it saved me hours of time. If I want to just drop in a plugin here, press F, and then I get this freaking list of plugins sorted by most recently used. It's awesome. It also can sort by tracks, so I can add drop in a new track. Super killer. So um, shout out to Kieran. This is awesome, man. Thank you so much. Alrighty, so let's jump onto this next sound. I'm going to bring the video up here for a minute. Jump onto this next sound. This looks like Euro Record. So let's listen. Okay, yeah, this was another deal with the contact mic. So I have um, I have this uh, handy dandy Gibson multi-tool. And what I did here was same deal, rub it over the contact mic, super, super simple. I wish I had the raw kind of... Another thing I, I like to do here is if I get a sound that works and I'm trying new source after that sound is already, after a sound has already worked. So for example, like, hey, this mouth thing, that's cool, like that's what I wanted. Um, if I record new source before I start even processing it, the first thing I'm going to do is put it on the processing to see if it did what, if it, if it works right. So, um, for this example, I'm pretty sure I took these recordings of rubbing the, this kind of heavier looking metally bit and I ran it into the same effects chain, same channel as this. And then I just duped the channel. And then when you bring in all three, we get this and here's with the video. We're starting to really get that first initial swirl. And you can see we have a lot of panning effects going on. Um, <coughs> excuse me, one more thing to mention is what I did to kind of um, bring some suction into that next following impact is I brought down a lot of that reverb send to uh, have it dry up right before that sound hits to give it um, some more distinction between the two parts. We didn't, I didn't want a lot of those tails or effects trails or delays carrying over. <laughs> Yeah, cool. So this is one of the few times I used um, one of my go-to uh, plugins here. So I love uh, Native Rounds, Native Instruments Rounds. And what I did was I took a couple uh, stabs with uh, rounds, creating some spaceships. And these kind of sound like this. I'm going to share these below. So I'll comp, comp these up and share them. Yeah, so, so you, I can pick any one of those, pretty much drop it in and it help me, it'll help me out for that sound. And the comped version of that sounds like this. So it's funny, it's not actually the impact laser gun sound. We use it later, but in this instance, I wanted to um, take one of the sounds, uh, chop it up, comp it up to give it more of that um, sci-fi character that we're going to hear again in the impact, right? So there, there is a theme here. It's, uh, hey, if I came up with a cool impact part, how can I bring it into the front? How can I incorporate it into the beginning as well so that we can tie it all together? How can I tie it into the front? Or how can I tie it, use it in the front and tie it in again in the, in the back, right? Keep everything in the same world. So next is the the um, the uh, uh, coins. And the reason I wanted to use the coins was to, um, I like to, when I have swirly bits, always have a sound at the beginning to indicate like that this is the attack of the sound. It's starting, right? 
And uh, and at the end, for the second little swirl inside, we have the same kind of deal. So I'll solo these so you can hear. The video is being tough, but. So as you can hear it, it's kind of this bitty, uh, little bitty attack part. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna group this all together. I'm gonna uh, not include the coins, and you can hear it. Yeah, this sounds pretty good, but the coins really give it this kind of crackly start head to the sound. And with the coins, it just it sucks it all together for me. Um, so then right below, once I realized I got this little spaceship sound the way I wanted to, which by the way, the processing for this is just some. Um, some lower mid boost and some oh upper uh, way high boost and then again using CQ and radiator as EQs. I just I love the low cuts. Um, now down here is where I really use the spaceship sound. So here you go. Kind of one of those downward sounds, you know, low, with no low end. I didn't I don't want much low end in this in, in this riser to really give that that uh, the stinger at the end of the bass drop uh, really give it some more punch. So, the, so this little first piece is for the riser, and the second part is the impact. We'll just kind of play both of them. Yeah, so here's more of that spaceship sound as was we heard before. And I'm sure I'm using some sort of saturation or boost here. Yeah, so <clears throat> same Echo Boy we were using before, right? Little bit of decap as we were using before. Same filter freak, just coming the other way to give it, you know, one filter's coming up, one's coming down, widening them out. Here's something I don't do often. I don't usually use this E-mode. I think it gets kind of messy. I love T and I love A on Decapitator, but I use E-mode here. Worth noting, I guess. Cool. So here's the riser uh, all together. Cool. Very cool. And then, all right, so let's jump in. Uh, oh, worth mentioning too, we do have um, outside of the group of pre-bursts, we do have um, more spaceship sounds here too. I'm sorry, I should have played those. So with... Um, with those in there, we sound like this. And it gives you more of that, you know, classic sci-fi charge up. And there we have um, some panning automation, more panning automation. And then we're using Tremolator on the second one to really go straight up uh, transformers on it. it won't seem more to let me solo it, but we uh, straight up transformers to give it that movement as we go along into the sound. So yeah, all together we have, uh, we have this. All right, so let's jump now into the into the the big part, right? This is the fun part of the sound. Your rack, sine wave, super heavy. Uh, we're doing a couple things here. Um, I know we're cutting out all the top. Yep. Uh, I know we're, well, this is a cool little trick. We're actually adding in decap over time, so that that initial kind of transient doesn't have any distortion on it. But we get a little bit in the end, and then we jack it up towards the a uh, little bit in the middle, excuse me, and then we jack it up towards the end to um, have the reverb get that crunchiness, but not the initial attack of the sound itself. Uh, we're compressing it. And then transient shaper. Um, any transient shaper I think would do a great job for this, but um, I like I like the sound of this one. I haven't, to be honest, I haven't used many other ones. Um, this is just to give me more of that attack up front to really pop that punch. And that bass drop was um, Cloud Terrarium again. Uh, it might've been mass, uh, if it's your rec print, cool. Uh, naming your tracks. Um, cloud terrarium, filter sweep. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, frequency sweep. Sounds like this. So it's super subtle with the. Uh, well, this, that sound is not subtle. Yes, sorry, but um, it's super subtle with the uh, the decapitator tone and and the drive changing. Right, kind of can hear it. Let me play it one more time and just keep an eye on these automation curves. You have this like underlying gritty texture that only really exists kind of in the reverb. So if I went like this and had that starting right away, it would sound like this. Totally different sound, right? And back to what we shipped with. You, um, I, well, personally, I like keeping the sine wave clean up front just to um, let the sine wave do its job down there and all the other mid range and high range stuff can fill that noise profile, that upper character. All right, all right, all right, all right. So, um, oh, this is a, a fun little massive patch. So uh, I use this preset all the time. TF Banana Time. Don't know how I made it. Not going to lie. Sounds like this. 
well, not really. It sounds like this. It's just some variation of one of the big um, bass leads, I'm assuming. I like to, the first thing I'll do is change the wavetable, see how that sounds, hop into the LFO, see if I can get more movement in a way I prefer it. Um, and then I, I like to save the something about the wavetable in here. So we have that sound by itself, sounds like this. It's kind of flat, it's kind of woofy, it doesn't have, it doesn't have a lot of you know guts to it. Trash will help with that, uh, super crunchy. Yeah, so that's how we get that the big, slappy, um, grouchy uh, slapback coming back into that reverb. This is a huge character that we get. Cutting the low end out here, because obviously the low end is being handled by the sine wave. Some more compression. I'm not sure why I use recomp here. Oh, you know why? This was, um, we're not actually doing this now, but I, I at one point was side chaining everything to, everything to the sine wave. That's been removed. I just didn't take the compression off. And then good old 200 millisecond kilohertz delay. With all those effects, it sounds like this. Yeah, so if you listen, I mean, the trash stuff, if we just had it like this, is loud and crazy. The EQ tames the low end. Tames it a little bit. You know what? Let's just pull it up for here for now, for the sake of the video. It's a little crazy. Pretty cool. Might tweak, tweak that a bit later, but uh, it's my sound. I do what I want. And yeah, I, I'm kind of surprised. I usually would print this out, but I guess, oh, I wanted some automation of the rate of the sound itself at a massive. So that's why I, I kept it the way it was. And we're going to hide those envelopes because that is terrifying for me to look at. Cool. So this next sound looks like I've got another Eurorack recording. Just some bright upper character. Uh, the spaceship sends. Oh, this is cool. So this um, this is a print of a Massive X preset that just generates a shit ton of noise for you. Um, it's so quick. It's so easy. It gives you about a thousand different noise patterns. Uh, and then you could stretch them, do whatever you want. I like having noise here. I thought it felt, the, uh, you know, went with the sound. We did do a bit of work here, I think. Uh, recomp, uh, micro shift to widen it way out. And then that bass cut radiator. I do that all the time. And then again, low end is out of here. We don't want the low end except for the sine wave. And then yeah, spaceship stuff again. That sounds pretty cool. I think what we did here was kind of hotten that up, I guess, right? Let's see. Okay, sorry, I was a little crazy looking. So we got uh, compressor, compressor, another transient shaper to give it some more of that snap. Uh, T steading, really driving it up this time. Tremolator by itself, make the honestly just to make the automation window look cleaner uh, when it's selecting the, the bands, uh, the automation that is, and then sucking out the low end even more. Um, boosting the, this little notch here, I don't know, probably don't need to do that, but c'est la vie. Oh, and frequency shifter to jack up that pitch. Well, scale the frequency, I guess. This is kind of like the trophy sound in my opinion. So if we just solo the risers and solo the bass drop, it looks like this, so this whoa track, I didn't put in either group for some reason. This this sound really can change everything. So what I'll do really quick, just to give you an example, we're at pitch is essentially plus one. If I jack this up to like pitch nine, listen to how different this is gonna sound. It just totally changes it. I think it's cooler down here. Let's try it at three. Yeah, it just changes the whole note. It's, it's, it's very tonal, right? It changes the whole note that you hear. Um, cool, cool, cool. So that's, uh, then we got stuff in back here. Oh, this is this is gonna complement, um, this is gonna complement that dirty little feedback. So we get that feedback from the massive patch, right? This is gonna complement that. And it's just more noise. It's just more noise of the mass. It's the noisy massive patch. So it just kind of envelopes in and goes away, right? So I'll play that with the um, noisy clip, or I'll play that with the uh, the initial sound that it's trying to align with. It just beefs it up, right? It really uh, sells it. 
So yeah, folks, um, that's the sound. There's a lot going on, but it, it's, I don't know, seven to ten, seven to eight of the similar groups used in different places with a couple different sources. Um, yeah, thanks so much for watching. I really enjoyed making this video and making this sound. Uh, check out the comments below for uh, the groups here. For I'm sorry, for the tracks. I'm going to post a lot of these uh, clips. I'll post the whole sound. And then I'll post some of these uh, bulkier kind of bulk recordings I got out of my Euro rack and got out of um, some of my patches. So y'all can have those to mess around with. And uh, yeah, so thanks for watching. Um, and if you guys like these, please let me know. Um, I'm trying to make more of these. Try to, I want to make content that people really like and make content that you know I would want to like. I, I kind of want to see uh, more in-depth stuff going around on YouTube. So that's what I'm making. So uh, yeah, thanks again. Appreciate it.